is a Math Made Easy fans. This is the 102nd video I have uploaded on my channel. It is on my channel right now, and it is by far the most complicated. <laughs> so, I think we're going to be covering limits, which is kind of a more calculus-y topic. Is that a word? Somebody please look that up on dictionary.com for me. Just to let you know I'm not sponsored by dictionary.com for saying that. But it's a very calculusly ca calculusy topic. We're going to look at the limits of trigonometric functions. So something more basic, um, but also kind of there's, there's you got to have big brain to process this. So let's um, get straight into it. Now, before actually before we get straight into it, I want to share a little analogy that one of my professors shared with me once. In algebra, it's like you have a window with like the shutters closed and you just can see a little slit in between. And that slit in between, which is right now my left eye, my right eye to you, is X, right? In calculus, you have the whole window open, but you have one of those annoying little bars going through the center of it. And I hate windows like that. It's kind of like the window back here, actually. That's more of a door. But you are trying to find this, but you're kind of blind to it. And you're just looking at the two sides, and you're trying to see if you can make a really good guess of where that is. And I'm just going to talk about the squeeze theorem, which basically just says that this green curve and this magenta line share said common limit, said common point of zero comma one. And even though this um, red function is actually gonna be sine of, sine of x divided by x, so we can't divide by x equals zero, so there, it's undefined, let me see if I can get this to you. Um, see if decimals graphing calculator is working. Zero undefined. So, but we can try to calculate that limit. And in fact, it's going to share the limit with these two because it's being kind of squeezed in, right? I hope that makes sense to you. And that's kind of the basis for this squeeze theorem, actually, this whole idea that sine of x divided by x is going to have the limit of 1. So a lot of so something a lot of people want me to do is find limit as x approaches zero of um one minus cosine x over x. And this is very much of a sister kind of equation to the first one. We're going to prove using the first one. Well, we're not going to prove. We're just going to find out what the limit is, man. I'm stoked for this. This is probably the most common example of this thing. But we're covering it here on Math Made Easy just for the fans who wanted this. So, what is this saying? Well, of course, this we can't find this uh, algebraically, so we have to find it calculusly. Um... Because, of course, if we were to divide by zero, that would be not epic. We would get mucho confusion. In fact, we're going to make this into something we do know, which is, let's put it down here, that sine of x divided by x. And then that's just the limit, the limit of that as x equals zero. And that's just going to be 1. This, y you know what I'm talking about. So, how can we get this into signs? Well, we can make it into a trigonometric identity. We have 1 minus cosine x divided by x, right? What if we multiply that by um, 1 plus 1 plus cosine of x and we just we we just multiply it by 1 we multiply it by 1 written in this very epic fancy way right this will give us 
um, one squared, and then the minus cosine and the positive cosine will actually cancel out. So we'll just have one minus cosine squared of x, okay? And we have this divided by x times this, so we have x times 1 plus cosine of x. Okay, and in fact, this thing in the numerator here is the same as sine squared x. If you have done any trigonometric identities, you will know that. I'll do a video on those later this month, hopefully. So now, we can write this thing as sine squared of x divided by um, x. That's a star. I'm such a noob sometimes. X times 1 plus cosine of x Right? So this is also the same thing as saying sine of x um, over x times, I don't have to use that x times because I always get it confused with the variable x, sine x divided by 1 plus cosine. Of x. Now, in fact, we just saw is 1 times this. Well, sine of x is going to be 0. I mean, this is this actually, the limit of this is 1. And we're thinking in terms of limits here, remember. So the sine of x, this is just 0, divided by 1 plus cosine of x. Well, that's not going to be 0 because cosine of x is 1. 1 plus 1, hmm, I've been pondering that one for a long time, and I've come to the conclusion it's 2, so we have 0 over 2, we add the, well, actually we multiply these, multiply that and that, 1 times 0, that's 0, and in fact, 0 is going to be the limit of when we see this function, so there's only one thing we can do now. Check it out on Desmos. Let me just type this in for y'all. 1 minus cosine of... So we should put... You got to put this all in parentheses when you're working on a graph and calculator thing. Like... Desmos, I'm, the camera's just going to be so shaky if I were to try to divide by x. And in fact, you will see, looks like we have a nice little graph going through 0 here, but when we actually go to 0, oh, I got 0, comma, undefined. There's that little empty point in there. So that can't be found algebraically. That right there is the beauty of limits, which is kind of, I think, kind of the most basic idea of calculus. So that's the video, Math Made Easy fans. Short video going up tomorrow. Hopefully some more trigonometry either on Thursday or Friday. It depends if I have a lot of homework on Thursday and if I can upload then. But for now, I will see you later. Subscribe, smash like, smash the bell, write a comment, and smash the comment button on a future video idea. But for now, this is Math Made Easy. Thanks for watching. Peace out.